Hey everybody, I want to take some time out of your very busy day to talk to you about this. It's a game called Tiny Epic Western. Now these are the Tiny Epic games that Michael Co. and Gambling Games is coming out with. Uh, Michael Co. is a pretty cool guy and I love this direction uh, that he's doing with the old Tiny Epic games. And I've been a big fan of Tiny Epic Heroes and Tiny Epic Defenders and Tiny Epic Galaxies. And Tiny Epic Western is another entry into this fantastic chain. And uh, this may very well be my most enjoyable game. I Maybe just because of the Western theme. I, I, I dig the Wild West. So uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time here in the introduction. I'm sure you've heard of the game already. I just want to dive right into the gameplay, and we'll come back here, and I'll tell you why I'm having fun playing uh, Tiny Epic Western. All right, this is a four-player game of Tiny Epic Western. I just want to kind of go over the basic rules of the game so you have a good idea of the mechanisms and also a, an idea of the game flow. All right, so each person is going to get a uh, little character board, and I've already placed those out there, but these are just character boards that kind of denote the, kind of the, the person that you are going to be playing. And like a lot of these games, each of them has a like special ability that allows them to break the rules in some way. So like the gunslinger here... Uh, he gains a plus two on your on your reroll while dueling. Uh, you'll have this track down here to mark your influence, basically your resources, and also you have these three spots for your workers. Tracking influence is simple enough. You get these three little cubes. Uh, there is blue, which is law. You get gold, which is money, and silver, silver, which is force. So if you gained, like if you had zero force and you gained two force influence, you just move it up to two. Easy. And when you spend it, you go it down. Okay, there you go. Pretty simple. Uh, so, uh, to begin the game, each each of these spots each will either be located, if you have enough players, they'll be in the player color, which is green. On the other side, it is, you know, just basic, but you are going to play with each location. Um, and then you're going to put your player board next to the location uh, that is there. So you definitely... Uh, do know uh, like which person has because basically people are going to be buying and building these buildings that are out here and they're going to be placing them in this location here on their building and then the they, buildings can then be used. We'll get to that in just a moment here. So uh, also each you'll be dealing a poker card like so and also a face down one here. I'll get to that. That's the rival card. We'll get to that in just a moment. And then each person is going to get two poker cards dealt to them. And they're going to keep one and, and discard the other. Uh, the reason why you get two and discard is because basically you're going to be looking for a spot um, where your uh, your poker card is going to work really well for you to win that location because you'll get the best possible hand. Um, so if you get the best possible hand in that location, you will get the, the, the spoils or the winnings. In this case, this would be two force uh, uh, influence if you won that location. Um, like here over at the bank, if you won this location, you'd get two gold. Okay, so like, so you're looking for a spot where if you get a card, it's going to work really well. And then, of course, you're going to be going by poker suits. So, you know, two of a kind, high card, flush, you know, straight, straight flush, so on and so forth. So in this case, even though I wouldn't reveal this, like I gave myself a two. So if I went here, I'd have three of a kind, which would be a pretty good hand. So on your turn, what you're going to do is you're going to take one of these little workers. You get you have two stand-up workers. You have a, you have a, a worker that is laying down. Normally, unless you have a rule or a, a rule of breaks, like the rancher has the ability to spend some influence to get that third guy to stand up. So you get three workers. Normally, you only have two workers. One of the common ways, or most common way, to get your third worker is that if you are unable to buy a building in the round prior. If that happens, you get the third worker is kind of like, oh, well, okay, he's not doing too well. Let's give him a little hand. And you get a third worker out there. Um... <laughs> Though if you don't get to buy a building, that's probably a bad thing because that's how you get your points. But regardless, uh, so on your turn, what you're going to do is you're going to take these workers and you're going to place them in a location that has one of these little people on the, them, and you're going to take that spot. Um, if this had a, a building attached to it like so, you would place it in that spot and get to use that building. Later on, if this person got another building, they would just put it over the top like so, and then you fan this building out. I'll have to explain that in just a little bit. But you only get to use the building that was on top. You don't get to use one that's below the other building. The reason why we fan these out is because there's these icons up here. You can see that there's purple and then green and an orange and that's like mining and wagoneering and, and and railroads it doesn't really matter what they are you can just call them by the numbers um uh, the the thing about them is that they are 
corresponding with this track up here. And I'm just going to bring this out so you can see this. This is the town hall track. And the town hall track does a couple things. It tells you the different types of hands so you can see which wins. You can see, like, the different suits. If it comes down to a suit, like, if you had, both people had, uh, you know, like a, uh, uh, like a flush or something, you know, that you could see which suit would be, be better. But up on top here, you have these tracks here. And you can see there's some the victory point totals here. 2, 1, 3, 2, and 5, 3. At the end of each round, somebody, the person who uh, wins the best hand, and I'll show that to you in a second, will get to take one of these three markers and they'll get to move it up on this track. The game ends when there's a marker on each spot and they're all by themselves. That'll take six rounds. Um, and then at the end of the game, whatever marker, so like if, like, you know, purple was in this one where it says 5-3, the person who has the most buildings that has purple mark uh, tokens on it will get five victory points, next will be third, and so on and so forth. And so that is a major way to get some extra victory points towards the end of the game. And so you kind of have to track that, if you will. So that is why those buildings have those icons on the top. So you're going to just go ahead, like I said, you're going to place your worker like so, and you got to place it on this location. And these spots, you can see, have like this, which is an immediate gain of, a, uh, of, of an influence, of a coin influence. Over here is during the resolution, you get two. And I've been saying, well, why wouldn't I take the two? Well, the thing is, is that if you place it on there and you get the one, you just get it. But you place it over here, and you say, okay, well, I eventually am going to want to get those two. Somebody else can come over to that location to say, well, no, you know what? I want to get those two, and I'm going to duel you. And when a duel happens, um, both players have to take a die, and they roll a die, and they and they compare the results. This would be a tie right now. And it's important to note that whoever gets attacked, defenders win ties. So at that point, so this is the case the attacker would be behind. The attacker gets the option of spending influence, and if you're the attacker, you spend force influence or silver influence to try to re-roll your die. So let's see if we you know, so you re-rolls the die, he pays one. Oh, you got three again. I'm still losing. I'm gonna re-roll the die. I got a four. Yay, I'm winning. So alternatively, you can reveal your card. If you reveal your, your poker card, you add the, the number that's on the poker card to your total. As soon as you are winning, the other player gets the option of choosing. The defender in this case, they are defending uh, with law, with, with blue influence. So they spend an influence, oh, let's see if I roll higher. And they roll, and they get a two, they roll again, and so forth. And then eventually, you know, maybe they spend a card or whatever, and they, you know, win or lose, you, you have a winner. Whoever loses, you put them lying down, and you put the other work on top like so, to show that they've won that duel. And so that in that case, what's going to happen is, is that so when you get to there, they can't use the spot, basically. They can't, they can't gain the bonus. They can't gain that influence. But they still get to use their card to try to gain the, the like, whoever's got the best hand, they still get to try for this, the winnings, if you will, at the end. So after everybody has placed all of their workers, and you go to that process, everybody's going to reveal their card, and you also reveal the rival card over here. If anybody happens to be on a location where they have nobody else they play against, like you're lucky nobody else wanted to go to that spot, you have to you use the rival card, you know, like in this case, like if nobody was over here, so like let's say yellow um, you know, was over here and, and they have nobody to play with, you know, they'd have to beat a pair of fours to, to, to win that. You know, so they, they don't just get the, the bonus automatically. They actually have to beat that. So then after that is done, you have to use the town hall cards, the one and the five there, and your card, and you have to try to then, uh, you'll go to the town hall, and in order then, each person has the option of buying the building at a spot that they have a worker on. You have to be able to pay the influence cost. In this case, like the doctor's office is two force and two gold. You have to be able to pay that in order to buy it. And you go around and each person has the option of buying one. Normally you can only, you can only buy one, uh, but occasionally there are ways to break that rule as well. Um, so after everybody is done buying, the person who won the town hall then gets to alter that disc, and then you pass the first player marker over to the next person, you restock everything, and then you play the next round. 
that continues on, as I said, through six rounds until you're done. You total up the victory points that you get from your cards, and whoever has the most points, obviously, is the winner. So, there you go. It's, it, it, it has a lot going on. It has a lot of intricacies as far as, like, trying to figure out which card to use and, and where to place your workers. It's a lot of fun. Um, and, I, and I do, I love the interactivity about this game. It, it's, it's just, uh, it never seems to be, like, anybody who wants to leave you alone to do your own thing, which I like. I don't like just sitting back and just doing my thing and then seeing if I did well at the end. So, but let me show you, uh, or tell you more about why I like Tiny Epic Western uh, in my conclusion. You know, for a game that has Tiny in its title, this game takes up a lot of real estate. I actually had some trouble. I, I kind of crammed everything together just so I could kind of show you uh, what the game looks like. But, I mean, I, in, in all honesty, the game usually takes up more space on my table and, and with everybody playing. Um, it is a very challenging game. I, I was surprised at the depth of the, of the decisions that I had to make as I played this. Um, from the get-go of, like, trying to figure out... Uh, it's agonizing to figure out which, which, which card to take. I mean, sometimes... You, you just get two bum cards but I mean a lot of times like you uh, I find myself well I find the other players at my table yelling at me to get on with my choice but I got my two poker cards and I'm looking and I'm trying to figure out I'm trying to deduce uh, which uh, what what resources I'm going to be trying to get and what uh, what card works best in conjunction with all the little intersections and and I like that I, I like that each each hand gives me that like uh, devastatingly tough puzzle uh, at times and I like feeling the the the, 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 the hamsters uh, you know running extra hard inside my brain trying to figure that out um, for that one decision alone I knew I was I mean it's, it's, it's weird when you play games and it's like you just start playing and you're like I'm liking this and like it begins and and then it's even weirder when like as the game progresses you're still liking it a lot um, uh, you know I I, I, I got feelings of Carson City a little bit. I mean, Carson City is more of a uh, uh, an area control game and stuff like that, and more of the building of the city. But I mean, I got the feeling of that. I mean, and I that's a game I enjoy a great deal. Um, I, I definitely was was like you know this is one of those games i had a smile on my face as i played it i mean mostly because of the fact that when somebody was taking a turn and you just was like don't duel me i don't want to have to fight to keep my spot you know i i um I, I nothing was more frustrating than that you know when somebody would be like just like oh yeah you know i'm just gonna go over here and you know it's like uh i'm gonna uh blast you <laughs> You know, and, 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 and take that away from you. Um, you know, and so, like, and it just kind of throws a wrench in your works. But, I mean, I like that. I like the fact that, you you know, you can't just, it's like, oh, well, you know, it's like any other worker placement game. You know, usually, I should say, almost any other worker placement. Oh, well, I went here and I collect five stone. Can't do anything about it. You know, I mean, and I like the fact that you have that ability to, uh, you know, throw the monkey wrench in people's plans. So, um, I like the theme. I like the different player powers. I like the tons of different uh, building cards. Um, I love the stock market, you know, thing at the end where, like, you know, you're processing that. I, I mean, I just the fact that, like, like I said, your your hand will work really well in some places, but not at others. So, trying to figure out where it is the most uh, important for your poker hand to be excel or be the best uh you know is, is is a tough difficult decision to make and then you also run to the risk of like well what if somebody just happens to have a better one i, I should have mentioned and I, and I forgot that i i didn't go through each and every spot but um there is a location the sheriff's office has the ability to actually if you put your workers there you're able to change your uh uh your 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 card you're able to change you know what what your card has you like basically change the suit or make it you know uh, higher or lower and that's something also so if you do get stuck with two bum cards you do have the, uh, the ability to alter it and kind of make something of it if you will so I, I wanted to make sure that a lot of people are like well if i get stuck with two horrible cards this game's gonna stink it's like well, no you can mitigate your luck a little bit like that so um you know for all the reasons it's just like i said highly interactive a lot of fun great theme great art um yeah this is just one of those games that i know uh it's going to sit next to the other tiny epic games that i have and it's going to get played a lot so uh, if you have any questions about Tiny Epic Western, please ask away. I'll be happy to answer those to the best of my ability. Um, as always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. And I mean, I say that every, every video, but I, I really do. I really appreciate you taking the time. And, uh, and until next time, uh, I'm the Undead Viking, and I'm telling you 
to have yourself one heck of a nice day. All right, bye-bye.